Uh, how is everybody? I'm doing well, thank you. Yes, <laughs> I, I heard that. <laughs> Uh, very, very happy uh, to be here. Uh, I always uh, take any opportunity I can uh, to come up to lovely Vancouver, and I would like to thank you very much for the wonderful weather, because it's been pretty awesome. Too. Um, as, uh, as Knuckles mentioned, I'm the Director of Policy and Enforcement for Microsoft's Xbox Live service, but I actually come before you today with an, a, a new announcement. Uh, I thought it was the right place to sort of announce this. Uh, that I have actually been named as the new creative director in charge of all content for Rooster Teeth. Wow. So, uh, I'm excited. Uh, they actually have, have not been really confident lately about some of the content that they have been producing. And they have asked me to come up with some maybe some new ideas, some new things that would, would help them be more successful. They feel like they just needed some new blood, some fresh energy. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely, being a huge fan, wanted to, to help them with that. And the first thing I did was I looked at where Rooster Teeth is today compared to where it was when it first began. And I noticed, you know, not a lot has changed. There's not been a lot of new ideas really injected into the, the whole Rooster Teeth sort of brand. And I thought the first thing that they needed to do was they needed to add some edge to, to their content. They really needed to, get, to really kind of darken it a little bit because I think it's a little too lighthearted. A little too much comedy. So the first thing I did was I, I actually redesigned their logo. <laughs> <laughs> this this is edgier, right? This is this, this says Rooster Teeth is serious, right? This is this is the stuff that that they're going to bring to bear when they say their brand is out there. They don't want to be too comic-y. I think that's where they've fallen apart lately. Is that it's just too funny, it's too humorous. Got to darken it up a little. So one of the things that I decided to do when I was first sort of analyzing this and figuring out, well, we're going to start right there, right, with the, with the harsher brand image, was I thought, what is the high watermark for comedy in the world? What is the thing that people look at as, man, if you could just take that, bottle it, and, and get it to everywhere else, everything would be funny? American television. American television is definitely the high watermark. The reason that it's the high watermark is because we've invented something that no one else actually has. It's something that I like to call tragic humor. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is this? What is this magical thing? Well, it's basically that point in American comedies where they feel like they need to do a very special episode of. I'm speaking here of Family Ties, the episode where Alex's best friend was killed. Uh, 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 <laughs> or that episode of Different Strokes, where Arnold escaped to leave poor Dudley to be molested by the guy. <laughs> That's the stuff that you need to start adding into the Rooster Teeth sort of, sort of genre. So I've come up with some great ideas, uh, some new content, some stuff that I think you guys are going to be really, really excited about. Now, again, looking at that rich vein of humor in American television, we certainly have this. Right? We have an ongoing series that mixes a little drama and a little humor together with an ensemble cast. Well, I think that that can easily be done in machinima and in other avenues, and I've come up with a new show that I like to call Douchebags. <laughs> now, using the awesome power of the Sims 3 engine, I think that we'll be able to tell a really, really good set of stories here. This is going to be about a series of people who are basically the worst people online that you can think of. They're real jerks. They're douchebags. <laughs> but you're asking yourself, I can see it, where's the tragedy? They don't have internet access. Oh. You see? You see? This is how you punch this stuff up. This is how you dial it up a little bit. Now, I know what all of you are thinking as well. What about the current content? It's fine to come up with something new. That's great. But what about the current content that Rooster Teeth is known for? What about things like Red versus Blue? Well, I think the first thing you do is, again, rich, rich, rich American television vein to mine here. We think about spinoffs. <laughs> <laughs> All right? CSI wasn't just satisfied with CSI, right? They knew they had to bring it to the next level when it got a little stale. They went to London. They went to Miami. They went to New York City. They really decided to open it up. And I think the opportunity here is to open it up for Red versus Blue. Why should it just be in the Halo universe? Let's darken it up. Let's punch it up. Let's get some realism. I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is breakout stuff. This is breakout stuff, right? Can you imagine the type of stories that could be told in the Red versus Blue sort of 
sort of storyline in these really, really terrible places, I think it's got huge potential. Huge potential. Now, I know you're also thinking about achievement. Level. I actually don't want to mess with that. I, I think that that dynamic actually works really well. I would bring in some new talent, though, to have the exact same sort of format. And I think these guys are the guys. <laughs> I think these guys are the guys to really take it to the next level and to, to really break out in a Team Hunter's sort of storyline. So, I mean, these are just some of the many ideas that I have got going on in my head uh, for this stuff. I mean, I've got so many more, so many more that I, I, I want to show you. In. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm really, really, really super happy to be here. And I'd like to share with you a major announcement. Um, it's, it's, been a, it's been an amazing few minutes uh, <laughs> for me, um, being in charge of the creative content for the Rooster Teeth guy. I mean, they're, they're fantastic, and I, I'm glad I was able to really bring some new ideas to the table. I have decided, through them <laughs> telling me that I have decided to return to my job as Director of Policy and Enforcement for Xbox. <laughs> I feel it was a great partnership. I feel it was an opportunity for both of us to explore new venues. <laughs> and I'm just really happy uh, that I was able to contribute in some small way. So uh, thank you for my previous role. Thank you very much for uh, your support. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, it was a good run. It was a good run. And I, like I said, I'm just happy I was able to contribute. But speaking about my actual job, uh, that I do. Uh, I am, as, as previously mentioned, the, the Director of Policy Enforcement for Xbox Live, which means, we say that a lot, but what it means is actually my team is in charge of trying to help make sure that the service is safe uh, for people to play on. And we do that in a number of different ways. Uh, you're familiar probably with most of my talks about this, so I'm not going to go into great detail about what we do. I will tell you that some of the things that we do are quite interesting. One of the most important things we do is we try to make sure that people interact on the service in good and safe ways. Now, you'd be surprised how some of the, some of the people interact can, can take on a, a flavor that you didn't quite expect. And I'll give you an example of that. When you and I think of safety on the service, when you and I think of good behavior, we think of not being a jerk in ways that mostly involve profanity or, or cheating or things of that nature. But sometimes we run across weird behavior that is very difficult for us to quantify and very difficult for us to try and figure out how exactly you call this bad behavior, even though it's disruptive. I'll give you an example of that, is that one time when I was playing uh, uh, Shadowrun, which is a team-based uh, oriented game on Xbox Live, we were having a great time, we were playing together, we were working as a team, and one individual on the other side of our, our sort, of, sort of party uh, ended up joining our team a little bit later when the skill set got reshuffled and began repeatedly to recite the Declaration of Independence <laughs> over and over again. And he was doing it so loud that we could not hear each other. So try to imagine, if you will, we're trying to play, and we've got to get the artifact, we've got to carry it over here, oh, did shoot that guy over there. And meanwhile, you're getting the Declaration of Independence in your ear as loud as you can. He stops at the end and he starts over again because I thought he was, he didn't realize his microphone was on. But I guess he did because he kept going, he was intending to disrupt us. So I'm not quite sure how you take that expression as that's bad behavior, but he was using, I guess, a Declaration of Freedom as a denial of service. <laughs> <laughs> and we ended up having to take action on him. Uh, I'm sure some of you are also familiar with uh, some of our adventures on uh, UNO. <laughs> now, UNO has a uh, camera function. And in policing the service, we find a lot of interesting behavior when we actually look at what people are doing with the camera. The vast majority of people are using the camera as you would normally use it. About 40% or so of them uh, are just pointing it at their face and they're just chatting and having a good time. 
about 25% of them pointed at a wall or a poster or something. They, didn't, they don't want to be on camera, but the camera's on. About 25% actually pointed at a cat. <laughs> not a dog, not a snake, not a fish, always a cat. And the funny part is, it works. <laughs> Cats usually just do things just sitting there that make it look like they're playing Uno. <laughs> I never knew this until we discovered it. The other small percentage that are left over uh, are unfortunately naked. And it's always men. <laughs> it's never not men. <laughs> and we have a metric on my team that we actually use when we are trying to describe this phenomenon to people, and we call it time to penis. <laughs> if time to penis is high, we're doing our job. We're knocking them offline. That's a permanent ban, by the way, for that type of behavior. Uh, otherwise, if it's low, we need to throw more people at the problem. And that's one of the many metrics that we use when we actually police the service. But when I think about safety on the service, and I think about a lot of the funny stories that we have and a lot of the funny behavior that we have, I keep coming back to Will Wheaton's Law, which you guys probably already know, but I'll repeat it here. Have fun, but don't be a dick. And I think all of us work really hard online to do that. But as I was reflecting on safety and I was thinking about what I want to start talking to people about in my role on the service, I started thinking a lot about growing up in the time period that I grew up in. I grew up when video games were just coming to be. And so my childhood was very, very balanced between playing baseball at a local park or something and playing in the arcades, where you were physically next to the people that you were gaming with and playing in a park physically with people against each other. And the ideas of sportsmanship and fair play would come into being because if you violated those things, you typically got punched in the neck. There was immediate feedback, as we might say today. I miss that sort of accountability in a way because I think that's what fosters really good behavior online. And I think that's what makes gatherings like this possible is because we all behave in a certain way towards each other that we want to be around each other and we all congregate, as much as I may joke about the content, around really amazing communities. And I think the Rooster Teeth guys have done an amazing job in fostering that type of community. And they're embodying something that I'm beginning to incorporate whenever I go and I talk about different things at events. I want to tell you a quick story about uh, an experience I had in the game Bulletstorm. How many of you are familiar with Bulletstorm? Okay. For those who are not familiar, it is a, 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 a first-person action game that is really kind of over the top in its depiction of violence. Uh, it's almost cartoony and, and funny in the ways that you kill your enemies. You have a device that is known as a leash, and what you do is you fire that leash at people, and once you have them, you can smash them on the ground or throw them up into the air. You can do all sorts of amazing things. You can impale them on walls and do all these really funny and really gross things to them that are all over the top, and you earn points by how spectacularly you kill someone. Well, I was playing online in this game, and the online component of this game is fascinating because it fosters team play. It basically throws everyone into the game and says, all right, you have to kill all the bad guys on this level, but you have to do it in such a way that is so stylish that you earn enough points to pass the level. You don't pass the level by killing everyone. You pass the level by working together to kill them in spectacular ways. We were terrible at that. <laughs> Awful. Really bad. Because we were new and we didn't know all the different ways to kill people. But there was one guy. There was one guy who was there. And he was really good. And while we were sitting there trying to do all of these different things, all of these different style tricks, and we couldn't do it very well, he actually stopped us. He said, all right, everybody, stop. Stop, 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 stop. We all stopped. Here comes a wave of enemies. The guy leashes the center enemy, pounds him into the ground, and throws him up into the air, which causes all the other guys to get thrown up into the air. So now there's eight guys in the air. One by one, he proceeds to spectacularly kill each and every one of them, one at a time, with a different trick, earning all these incredible points. All the bodies hit the ground. 
there's dead silence from all the rest of us who can't believe what we just saw. And he says very quietly, that's how Papa does it. <laughs> yeah, that's how Papa does it. <laughs> and, we, and we spent the next few minutes being tutored by him. He basically would, as a wave of enemies would come in, he'd say, all right, when this guy comes in, don't just leash him and kill him. Leash him, throw him into the air, and impale him on that cactus so that we can get the style points for the team achievement that we need to get to get enough points to move to the next level. And he taught each of us how to do each and every one of these tricks. And we had a blast. For like the next hour, we were being made better by the fact he was taking the time to teach us. And I thought about growing up in that park, and I thought about growing up in the arcades, and I thought about someone standing next to you and you know that they're next to play the game because they've got their quarter notched up in the title of the game. And they're cheering you on, though, even though they get to play next if you do really well. And I thought that it's about time maybe that I help recommend that we, as, as gamers and as generally awesome people, we think about moving beyond just don't be a jerk or don't be a dick. And maybe we... we we strive towards being excellent to each other. And the reason that I think that's important is that guy in that bullet storm game, he was being excellent to us. He wasn't just not being a jerk. He was helping us have fun. And he was helping show us how we could play this game better and how we could have more fun doing it together than we would in any other capacity. He could have just left the game and gone find somebody who's good, but he didn't. He was excellent to us. And so that is sort of my new message when I come to talk is really centered around how we can all be excellent to each other. And I think that's, that's a very important thing. I hope that you guys have an amazing day today. I know that there's a lot of great stuff uh, that we've got planned for you guys. Unfortunately, I can't stay. I have to rush back to Seattle. Uh, but I want you to think about that when you're gaming online and when you're thinking about community. Because I see how especially the Rooster Teeth community, works in the forums together and talks in the forums together and behaves together. And I see how the PAX community does that. And I see how gamers in general do that. And I think if we just do that to ourselves, that's great. But we have the opportunity, I think, to do it online. I think we have the opportunity to do it uh, in our gaming, no matter what platform we're doing, to share sort of that experience of being awesome to each other and being excellent to each other. So thank you very much for your kind attention and your laughter at my attempts to make things better. Uh, I don't need to make them better, as you know, they put out great stuff. So I want to thank everyone at Rooster Teeth for having me come out here and talk to you. And uh, I really appreciate the time. So thank you very much. I think I am all of five minutes short of my targeted time. Did you want to introduce the next? Or actually, if you'd like, I could do. But, but like, an answer, would you like me to answer some questions for you? Do you have any questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, I don't want to give out his gamer tag because I haven't asked him. But yeah, I did. I did add him to. I should ask him. I tell that story now enough that I probably should should see if it's okay. Um, that's unfortunate. I just don't feel like it would be right to violate his privacy because he may end up getting tons of friend requests from awesome people, but he may not be expected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a lot of work on me. <laughs> so, uh, no, I, I'd appreciate that, but uh, I, I think I'll just go see if it's okay with him, and maybe I'll just mention it in the, in the talks in the future. Any other questions? How much does it cost for us to eat with the hand people we don't like? <laughs> uh, price no man can pay. No, nope, I, I can only ban people who actually violate the rules. Now, it's free if, you, if they're violating the rules. You just have to tell me. Or if they're Major Nelson. Yeah, or if they're Major Nelson. That's 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 pretty much free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but, oh, um, okay. Uh, besides uh, Uno, what what other game do you tend to have problems with in terms of just uh, violating rules? Any game that has good support for uh, leaderboards, we uh, tend to sometimes get some bad behavior there. But there's no there's no real way to say. 
one type or the other. A lot of people would say, oh, well, it's probably all modern warfare or something of that nature. But the reality is um, it's a variety of titles. It's really hard to pick just one. Yeah. It depends on when titles come out, and it depends on what types of titles they are. If they're team-based games, we tend to get more complaints because there's more interaction and people are more passionate about yeah. the dynamic. Yeah. Like, I'm still kind of baffled. How do you actually police all of these people across the world? Like, do you have, like, just a giant screen and people just light up? Or how do you do <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's a variety of ways. I can't go into some of it because it's technology that we don't talk about. Of course. Yeah. But uh, there's a variety of different ways. The first and most important thing that we have is the collection of complaints from customers. So we actually pull the complaint feed on the Xbox Live system uh, on a periodic basis daily. Um, so several times during the day. And we look at what people are telling us about other behavior on the system. So for text-based complaints like profile content or a bad gamer tag, it's very easy for us to review the evidence and make a determination. For other things like communications, it's a little bit harder. We have to be present in the game itself. Um, and there's some other things that we do to help police that type of stuff. But yes, there's a team of people working at Microsoft right now. They work seven days a week, uh, including holidays and everything else working to police the system and working to, to sort of look for bad behavior. So yes, we do uh, we do have the capability to, to do a lot of that. Oh yeah, and I just thought of one more thing. Um, of course everybody knows that the PlayStation Network now is down and all that stuff, but um, we pay for our uh, Xbox memberships. Like, would you say that that payment has like in some impact as to like people getting banned or like a lot more policing on the, on, uh, the servers? Or I, I'm not aware of an equivalent team on the PSN Network. Um, that doesn't mean there isn't one. Yeah. That, that just means I'm not aware of it. Um, it is true that a lot of the value of Xbox Live in terms of the, the, the cost of it does manifest itself in a lot of different things that you guys can't typically see. Uh, that, that can be anything from infrastructure to my team. So in general, I would say that the, the brief answer is, well, sure. You know, we constantly reinvest in the service and we are constantly working uh, to make it a value for, for you guys. That can take the, the shape of things that... Um, you, you see like Hulu Plus or something like that. And sometimes it can take the shape of things like my team. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, I think it's awesome that you have all these tools to sort of punish and you know, disruptive players, especially when you're in a situation where it's you know, uh, like one team versus another. Um, do you have ways to reward players who, rather than leaving the team, actually do exactly that very inspirational tour of story useful and actually carry their team to victory? It's, it's one of the things I'm, I'm working on doing, is, is, taking that, is taking that idea and then creating an incentive for it. Um, I think it starts with just getting people to remember themselves how awesome they can be towards other people, and then you move towards, and by the way, here's a, here's a nice thing for doing that. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, I, I absolutely think about stuff like that. And I know you're Jones and to write the theme song to this. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. Yeah. What's sort of the average age uh, of the people you end up banning? Is, there, is it mostly younger people that end up offending, or is it older people? Uh, justice on the system is mostly blind. Um, so what I mean by that is that we don't collect or otherwise tend to look at a lot of information about who we're hitting. We look at instead at what they're doing. Uh, and hit them that way, but I would say in general, you, you wouldn't be surprised. It's the younger crowd. <laughs> in general, it's the younger crowd. Very few people like me <laughs> get in. All right, so thank you very much. I think that brings me right into my of time. <laughs> I don't want to step on anything else. So thank you again very much, guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. Be excellent to each other, and, uh, and have fun. Thanks.